Hello from Shanghai, this is Chris. Welcome to another episode of China Currents, your weekly news report of what's trending in China. The top news in China in the past week is undoubtedly the annual political sessions. That is, the 14th National Committee of the Chinese People's Political Consultative Conference and the 14th National People's Congress. Known as a platform for concentrating Chinese policy signals, the annual two sessions serve as a crucial window for the world to observe China. In anticipation of these significant events, global media outlets and overseas experts have been actively looking forward to the two sessions, recognizing them as a source of valuable insight into China's development. More than 3,000 domestic and international journalists have registered to cover the two sessions, with over 2,000 from within China and more than 1,000 from Hong Kong, Macau, Taiwan and other countries. On March 5th, Chinese Premier Li Qiang announced a 1 trillion RMB worth of special ultralong government bonds. The issue of this ultralong bonds will continue for the next several consecutive years, specifically allocated for national strategic initiatives and the development of key areas concerning national security. Issuance of the year 2024 was included in the annual government work report to the National People's Congress delivered by the Premier. It's the fourth time that China issued a special national debt since the first release in 1998. The most recent issue of special bonds was in 2020, with 1 trillion RMB worth specifically allocated for nationwide COVID-19 prevention and control. Special is defined as debts allocated for specific purposes or programs, usually on a national strategic level, and is excluded from the deficit. With consideration of the recent international situation, policymakers in China have stressed multiple times on prioritizing national security, aligning with the announcement of these issuance. Prepare to undergo the major tests of high winds and waves and even perilous stormy seas, said President Xi during 20th CPC National Congress in 2022. An ultra long refers to the bond issuance periods exceeding 10 years. In 1998, China issued a series of long bonds as stimulus for infrastructure in response to the 1997 Asian financial crisis. Besides the special debt, the government work report also released a physical plan for the year, including a 3% deficit rate equal to that of 2023 and a special bond of 3.9 trillion RMB for local government debts. The report emphasized the necessity of the optimizing expenditure structure, which will strengthen financial support for national strategic programs and basic livelihoods. In exchange, the annual physical plan will restrict general expenditure that occupies the majority of local government debts. On March 5th, China's State Council releases the GDP growth target for 2024 during a press briefing in the two sessions, which aims to achieve a growth rate of around 5%. When asked about the rationale behind setting the target at this level and the measures that will be taken to ensure its attainment, Huang Shouhong, the head of the drafting team for the government work report, explained that the target was determined based on comprehensive considerations of various factors, including both domestic and international situations, as well as current needs and long-term objectives. He emphasized that the target is aimed at addressing the pressing issue of expanding employment, increasing household income, and mitigating risks, all of which require a certain level of economic growth. Huang also noted that the effects of major policy measures implemented in the second half of the previous year are expected to continue to manifest in 2024. Beijing remains optimistic about achieving the target and is committed to implementing necessary measures to sustain economic growth and ensure social development. Next up, let's take a look at one of the top trending proposals on the Chinese internet. Kenneth Fok Kai Kong, a Hong Kong representative of the National People's Congress, proposed an increase in paid days off in Chinese labor system on March 5th. With heavy workloads and insufficient guarantee for labor regulations, a portion of laborers in China have no vacations, cannot take a vacation, or dare not take a vacation, Fox summarized. He proposed amendments to the current pay days off system, recommending additional off days added each subsequent year to employees, up to a maximum of 10 days from the five days initially. Fogg also stressed the priority of mandatory implementation of such policies according to law, including penalizing enterprises violating related regulations and laws. In China, labor regulations and laws only set a minimum of five days off currently, 
plus the regular two-day weekend off is not strictly implemented in many enterprises in China. With improvements in living standards aligning with economic growth, the vacation system has become insufficient for employees, specifically for the younger generations. The tourism industry in China has also been affected by the vacation system. Visitors concentrated on the seven-day Labor Day vacations and National Day vacations, Falk pointed out in his proposal. To stimulate the domestic economy, it's necessary to expand tourism opportunities by increasing the number of paid days off, thus releasing the consumption potential of the masses. Next up, space. The Shenzhou 17 crew aboard China's orbiting space station successfully completed their second extravehicular mission on Saturday, as announced by the China Manned Space Agency. Taikonauts Tang Hongbo, Tang Shengjie, and Jiang Xinlin executed their assigned tasks with precision, marking a significant milestone in China's space exploration endeavors. The extravehicular activities, lasting approximately eight hours, involved a meticulously planned spacewalk by Tang Hongbo and Jiang Xinlin. The duo, supported by the space station robotic arms and coordinated efforts with scientists on Earth, safely returned to the Wentian lab module after accomplishing their objective at 1.32 p.m. China launched the Shenzhou 70 manned spaceship on October 26, 2023, and the crew conducted a repair test during the first extravehicular mission on December 21st of the same year. During their second spacewalk, the Taikonauts focused on the maintenance of the Tianhe core module's solar wings, addressing the potential impact of small space particles. The China Manned Space Agency reported that following thorough evaluation and analysis, the solar wing's power generation function is operating normally. The mission marked the first time the Taikonauts successfully conducted in-orbit maintenance of the extravehicular facilities, and additionally, the Shenzhou 70 crew conducted inspections on the status of the space station's modules, ensuring their continued functionality. Next up, as the Biden administration imposes additional tariffs on autos from China, U.S. Commerce Secretary Gina Raimondo said in an interview that cars these days are like iPhones on wheels. Chinese electric vehicles cause national security risks. Imagine a world with 3 million Chinese vehicles on the roads of America and Beijing could turn them off at the same time, she said. In response to this imagery by the U.S. Commerce Secretary, Chinese netizens generally believe that this accusation is essentially protectionist, for the very reason the rapid development of China's electric vehicle industry threatens the interest of some U.S. capital. National security is nothing more than an excuse, and such smear campaigns are a common U.S. tactic. iPhones are American products. Were you suggesting that iPhones, Tesla, and even Boeing have been sending secret data back to the US? Next up, in recent days, a property transaction went viral on Chinese social media with hashtags Seaside Property, Near Shenzhen, and Ultra Low Price trending together on Weibo. A unit of semi-detached house of about 154 square meters was sold for a mere 250,000 RMB. The decline in seaside property prices can be attributed to various factors. Firstly, the oversupply of properties has led to intense competition among sellers, forcing them to lower prices to attract buyers. Additionally, changes in government regulations and policies have impacted the real estate market, leading to a slowdown in demand. Furthermore, the evolving preferences of buyers have shifted towards other investment options or different locations, reducing the demand for seaside properties. As a result of these factors, there is now an abundance of low-priced second-hand seaside properties flooding the market, which has diminished their previous appeal. Last but not least, in the latest salvo against TikTok, a bipartisan group of U.S. lawmakers introduced a bill on Tuesday requiring ByteDance, the Chinese owner of the hugely popular app, to divest control within 165 days or face an effective ban through removal from the U.S. app stores. This legislation will trample the First Amendment rights of 170 million Americans and deprive 5 million small businesses of a platform they rely on to grow and create jobs, a TikTok spokesperson responded. The American Civil Liberties Union has also criticized the bill as unconstitutional. We are deeply disappointed that our leaders are once again attempting to trade our First Amendment rights for cheap political points during election year, said Gina Leventhoff, an ACLU senior policy counsel. 
The bill, led by Republican Mike Gallagher and Democrat Raja Krishnamurti, aims to address the so-called national security risks over TikTok's ties to China. The House Energy and Commerce Committee is set to vote on a bipartisan proposal on Thursday. The confrontation escalates after months of U.S. officials ratcheting up pressure over purported security threats. In January, TikTok CEO Shou Zhu, a Singaporean, faced aggressive questioning about his citizenship during a child safety hearing. Weeks ago, he endured grilling from over 50 lawmakers at another hearing focused squarely on TikTok. With 170 million American users, TikTok has achieved a massive scale, making an outright ban far more complicated. This bill would only block the app from being distributed through official app stores, not prohibit existing users. As the 2024 election nears and TikTok's US influence grows, political and corporate interests in both parties appear motivated to bring the platform under domestic control. Well, that's all for today. Thank you for watching this episode of China Currents. If you have any thoughts and comments about our show, please reach us at the email address below. I'm Chris, looking forward to hearing from you and see you next time.